But he didn't write, I said, how much money do you make? Look, I was never brash. I mean, I was never bashful. <coughs> and so he said, we made $2 million last year. I gave it all away. And uh, Stanley Tam did that throughout his lifetime. I wrote a book, this book over here, and I, I wanted to tell the story of Stanley Tam in the book. So I called him up and talked to him. I said, hey, Stanley, how you doing? He said, I'm great. I said, where are you? He said, I'm in my office. 97. He said, I'm still leading people to Christ. He's going to have a big house in heaven, isn't he? Hey, Bobby, you used a phrase that Mr. Tam used that, that he, he, he began to realize God owns my business. What does that mean? Well, in Stanley's case, he, he legally, he, he had a foundation. He gave all the stock of the company to the foundation. And he and his wife had that foundation, and that's where all the money went. And they gave it all away out of that foundation. And so literally, God didn't own his business. For me, when God started this call on my life, and by the way, I didn't have a business, so I got him to provide us a business which he did. Sue and I prayed for this business. We prayed for a certain amount of money we needed to eat with, and God provided exactly to the penny the amount of money we needed. And and he he set in motion a company. I said, the only thing that I'm going to ask you, the, the owner of this company, by the way, was Bert Sunberg. I said, who was not a Christian at the time. And I said, Bert, the only thing I'm going to say is I'm going to have to be able to operate this company as a platform for ministry. And honor the God, honor God with tax. He said, Well, we're making no money now. So if we gotta pay a tithe, that means I get 90%. So that's okay. <laughs> and so um, that started a great friendship with Bert. I, I won't go down a path of, of sharing how Bert came to know the Lord, but Bert came to know the Lord and then got fired up about uh Having a company for Christ and was one of the founders of that. Success. And he owned his own company. He did. He did. He actually owned several companies, but it was so it, it so was a great time. So Stanley Cam, Cam became a model in your life of a man who said, "Who's who lived? I, I don't own this. God owns this." That's right. And Larry had um, had great influence down the same line. Walt, uh, I learned from Larry that God owns it all, and that we're stewards of what He's entrusted us with. And that if he's entrusted us with a company, we need to operate that company for his glory, not our glory. And so that became a foundational pillar of FCCI. The, 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 the three main points, if I remember, of FCCI, FCCI all begin with the letter S. Those three words are? Salvation, sanctification, and service. When you say salvation, what are you referring to? I mean that, that we need to be evangelistic through our business. We need to share the gospel. Uh, we need to be like Stanley Tim. Maybe God didn't call us to lead five people a day to Christ, but he certainly called uh, from 1 Peter 3.15 that we need to be able to share the hope within us to all men. And so that became a, a primary driver, salvation. Sanctification is what happens after salvation. That uh, if somebody accepts the Lord, evidently three people accepted the Lord last night. Fantastic. Praise the Lord. And, and Joe was right. Joe, you had a big influence in your few minutes up here. You were right when you said it's more important than all the rest of the stuff. Yes, sir. It is. We, the, the angels are singing in heaven. But uh, the next step for these people that accepted the Christ or that we might lead to Christ is sanctification and sanctification is, is helping to grow up people in the Lord to disciple them to mature them and help them grow to get them plugged into a local church and then the third thing is service salvation sanctification and service and service is what we do uh, in our community for no apparent reward uh, how many of you know that Franklin Graham is going around the country and speaking in all 50 states? By the way, he's going to be in Santa Fe on the 16th of March from 12 to 1 o'clock on the court, on the state capitol steps. And uh, I would encourage you to go. We went when he was in Atlanta. It's a, 
it's an event. And one of the things that we did was we decided we'd offer that to anybody in our company. We've got about 100 people in our company in Atlanta, and we've got about 100 people in Augusta, and about 50 people in... So, so we have several hundred people all told, but the Atlanta people have maybe 100 people, but 25 of them said we'd like to go. And so we arranged to get them down there, we arranged to feed them lunch, we arranged for them to hear it, and, and that's really sort of comes under this service category. We didn't have anything to gain. It, it really, if you add up how much time we reimbursed our people, it was several thousand dollars. And, and uh, we did that to honor Christ and to show people that, that he was important to us and that we wanted to do that. The people were energized. It, it's sort of interesting. We've got sort of a diverse company. We've got uh, people from 10 different countries. And... Uh, so you get all kind of thoughts and, and different beliefs, and so I didn't know what we'd get when we did that. But they were all energized to say, we can do that. We can, we can honor God through our lives. We can make a pledge to the values of the Bible. And they did that. Bobby, uh, besides all the efforts you put into FCCI and your role as chairman of the board, you run a company. Uh, have you had days uh, at the company, periods of time where you've gone through some real difficult challenges, crises almost in the company and seen God bring you through that? We really have. Well, I wish I could tell you it was a rare occurrence, but it's, pretty, it's not so rare. And there are lots of them. Um, and, and I think that's true of all little companies. I don't know what the biggest company in this room is, but I suspect there's no company in this room that doesn't go through ups and downs. And uh, you specifically recall something with a yeah, body, Bobby? Yeah, I'm going to tell you about two, Walt. One was we had nothing to do with other than God just reached down and bailed us out. We, we have a company, and we have furnaces that run around the clock, but one night... About three o'clock in the morning, a lightning strike hit the corner of our building and started a fire. It started a fire in an area where we had had 55 gallon drums of oil. It, it was a atom bomb ready to go off. There was a water cooling line that went through that area. It went over to a press and it was made out of plastic and the fire melted the water line and the water went out and, and quenched the fire. <laughs> the police, when the firemen got there, there was no fire to put out. And it did $500,000 worth of damage, but it did not explode and, and destroy the company. And then, that's how God has, has interacted with our company when we didn't even know the problem. We didn't even know we had a problem. We're asleep. So it's, God was at work for us. He had some financial challenges, buddy. Yeah. We really have. I, I'm. Um, what I'm, I wanted to tell you about a uh, a little event. I told this on the radio, uh, on the TV yesterday. But uh, we had a guy. I teach a Bible study at Applied that I've taught for forty years or so. And uh, there was a bright young guy that I particularly wanted to pour truth into his life. He came every week, and and it was sort of belligerent a little bit, but. Uh, I was encouraged because he came. And then one day, OSHA knocked on our door. And OSHA said, one of your employees has filed a major complaint against you. And we find that when a major complaint is filed, somebody's got a vindictive purpose behind that. He said, what I would recommend to you to do is don't let me in your plant today. This is the OSHA guy telling me this. <laughs> Mr. Turner, he said, don't let me in your plan today. Fix as many of these 19 major violations as you can fix by tomorrow morning because I'll be back with a warrant and to get in your plan. You can't keep me out. Uh, and so we did that. We hustled up, and, and as it turned out, we got fined $150 for dust in the air and too much dust, and which is a significant thing, but it... That's all we got time for. That was one of the things that the man complained about, the dust? No, he didn't. But the, as they go through, they look for all the other things they might find. But uh, at any rate, uh, uh, 
it ended that thing and we went on and several weeks later another OSHA man comes to the door and this guy said we're you've got an employee it happens to be the same employee that filed the first complaint and he uh, claims that you're calling them slaves and that you're saying you're a master and that uh, I was teaching out of the book of Colossians, which probably is familiar to a lot of you, Colossians 3 and 4. And uh, uh, they said, we recommend that you let us negotiate for you and, we'll, and we recommend you pay him $1,000 and we think we, he'll go away. He did. Say it. This is this bright kid that wanted to challenge things, but he... He's the one that turned us in. So it was really sad for me. I didn't think anything more about it. I moved on. And um, 10 years later, a uh, guy came to the office. It was this guy. And he, he asked the uh, receptionist, receptionist if he could see me. And I, he said, this guy wants to see you. I said, I don't want to see you. <laughs> you think I have forgiveness in my heart? <laughs> we, we won't go there, but I recommend you forgive me. So, uh, but at any rate, he came back. She came back a few minutes later and said he begged you to see him. I said, "We'll send you back. I'll see." Him. And he came back and he said, "I just want to come and apologize to you for what I did, which was so evil and so wrong. But I want to tell you the rest of the story." He said, "When I left your company." I got on drugs and alcohol, and I went down into the utter pit. And when I was down in the pit, I remembered what you had taught me about Jesus Christ. I accepted Christ, I climbed out of the pit, and I started a company, and I'm operating a company on biblical principles. <laughs> you know, it's sort of an interesting deal. Before he came back, or if I hadn't seen him, I would never have known that. I think I, God sent that to me as way of an encouragement. But uh, there are a lot of crises. Those are two. And Bobby, so God doesn't promise us smooth sailing the day we drop to our knees and commit our life and our company to him and say we're going to run on biblical principles and put a Bible verse on our letterhead and a cross on our truck. <laughs> no, whatever we might do that they say, hey, now, God, we're on your side, and now uh, I'm going to watch you and help our, us, our company take off. It doesn't work that way. No, I think all of us want it to work that way. We, uh, I know that when I read the book, In His Steps, I decided I'm going to take the high road. I'm not going to ever go down on this low road, and God's going to bless me, and it's going to be great. And uh, I'm excited, and... Uh, but what I found is that we have these problems that come in and out pretty often. Uh, about as many problems as we have good things. But uh, ultimately, some of the problems that we see, like, like the story of this guy, are really a great, fantastic blessing that we didn't recognize as that. So I would say that uh, financially, we've been right on the edge. Of, of going out of business. Our, our company is fairly large. We, You've been on the edge of going out of business. Going out of business. We, uh, we're, we do business in, on, we've got operations in six continents, and we're all over the world, and uh, God has blessed us with technology and business, and our company is growing, and uh, it's been a great thing, especially because I've got three sons that are coming into this business, and they and they all run sections of the business. We have several different companies. 